Hey, writer friends. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Holly. I'm a writer aspiring to be a published author. And today I'm going to talk all about my 2017 NaNoWriMo experience. So for those of you who don't know, this was actually my third time participating in NaNoWriMo. The first time I participated, I got 36,000 words in, which was pretty good for me because it was really the first time I really got back into writing. I had been writing maybe a chapter a year in my work in progress that had been a work in progress for many, many years, maybe like eight or nine years. Um, so I was very proud of myself there. Um, my second time I participated, I wrote 8,000 words. I had gotten injured on November 2nd, so I couldn't really write um, or type at all because I had injured my elbow and it affected my forearm and wrist, so I couldn't write or, or use the computer very much before it would flare up my arm. So that was kind of a bust last year. So I am very, very, very proud of myself for actually winning NaNoWriMo this year. I know last year I was so bummed because I couldn't write and I had felt like I had really had all of the motivation to get those words in. So this year I was like, I'm gonna set myself up for success. Like I wanna win NaNoWriMo. I wanna know what that feels like. And I wanna make this goal and, and reach it. So what I actually ended up doing was taking the first week of NaNoWriMo off of work. So, I wasn't by myself though, because I flew into Arizona and spent that week with my twin sister, Heather. So that was maybe, not maybe, this was the best thing that I could have ever done to set myself up for success because I wasn't starting NaNoWriMo off by myself. I had my twin sister with me, like how awesome is that? So I definitely recommend if there's anyone that you know where you can like meet up and write, that you should have, you should do that in the future, or even just you know when it's not NaNoWriMo, just finding someone that you can write with. Um, and we wrote side by side together, and then when we finished our chapters, we would swap them and read each other's chapters. So this was another way that I got my words in because I was very motivated to finish the chapter because I wasn't only writing it for myself, I was writing it for my sister too, and. I was loving what I was writing and she was obsessed with the story too and was like, I, I want to find out what happens, keep writing. And, and I was saying the same for her story. So it was very motivating to have her there with me. And so through all those other weeks, the second, third and fourth weeks that I was not side by side with my sister, it was still motivating for me to work on my NaNoWriMo novel because I knew I would still send those chapters to her. And plus, I was just loving the story, so I wanted to write for myself. But, you know, there were days where I got really tired, I was exhausted, um, just lazy or low energy. So I pulled this that my mom had got me, and this was kind of like the theme for uh, the month of November. And this says, instant coffee. No, wait. See, I need, I need more coffee. Instant human, just add coffee. So I kind of thought that was perfect. Um, that was kind of my life story in November because I needed coffee a lot. Um, towards the end of November, I was trying to just have tea in the morning and then have coffee in the afternoon if I needed a pick me up. But that was pretty much my drink of choice this month. The other good thing that came out of writing with my sister was that I found out that I really, really like writing to instrumental music. So usually I write to no sound, nothing at all. I just have my earbuds in, but I'm not listening to anything. And I kind of, you know, tested the waters and dabbled in listening to some instrumental music before but I didn't really like outright just listen to music. But when I was with my sister, she actually shared some instrumental music with me and it just got me pumped. And they were either epic music or fantasy music or emotional music um, that really just helped set the mood for the scene that I was writing. And sometimes it like just lined up perfectly. Like it would kind of slow down when I was writing more of like an emotional part and then it would kind of speed up and, um, you know, get louder as I was writing like a fight scene. So it was actually pretty cool. 
Um, but the channels that we were listening to were uh, the Spirit of Orchestral Music and Pandora Journey. So I'll, I'll probably actually link those down below um, in case you're interested in that. But yeah, I really like listening to instrumental music now. So that's kind of a cool thing that I figured out, even though I've been, you know, writing pretty steadily for two years now. I'm still finding things out about myself. And that can change maybe from work in progress to work in progress. And there are some times where I'm like, no, I think this music's kind of distracting me and I will just cut it off because I just want to kind of focus on the scene. But for the most part, it's been helping me along. So when I came back home after being with my sister in Arizona, I had to go back to the daily grind and go back to work. So that's what I was nervous about that. Okay, now I'm gonna have less time to write because I have a full-time job and I have to go back to all of my life duties, taking care of my pets and spending time with my fiance. He kind of knew that I was gonna be, you know, just writing and kind of ignoring him for most of the month. Um, but I didn't want him to be a complete widow were. Um, so, uh, so what I tried to do was wake up early in the morning before work and usually I would write about 30 to 45 minutes and I could get a pretty good amount of words in. It always depended maybe 400 to 700, 800 words. Um, but I really liked that because I needed that motivation to get some words under my belt before the day even started so that I didn't feel anxious about you know, getting those words in when I was actually at work and I felt like my mind would wander, which it did kind of do that anyway, but it wasn't as bad because I knew I had those words already written. So then um, I also tried to get some words in at lunchtime. I would take my laptop to work and go off to a private area or sit in my car and write. I didn't really write in my car too much, which I usually did in the summer because now that it's the fall, it's a little colder out in Chicago, but it is still pretty mild for winter. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then I'm a physical therapist. So sometimes I got some patient cancellations or patients that wouldn't show. And if it was a long enough amount of time, I would try to get some words in as well. Um, one thing that I used to do was, you know, just sit down and I had to spend at least 30 minutes writing because I had to get into the zone. But as the months and years have gone by, I've realized like I can just sit down and bust out, you know, words for 10 minutes and that's fine. I can still get in, you know, kind of get in that mini zone. Uh, the only problem is when I have to stop, I'm like, no, I'm just starting to get into it. Like, but, but I find that like, even if I'm writing in these little chunks, it will build up over time. And that really helped me. So I wouldn't only write with those patient cancellations. Um, but at lunchtime and in the morning. And then also, if I didn't get my word count in or if I was feeling extra motivated, I would also write when I got home from work. And so this is where my sister comes in because since we motivated each other by writing together for the first week, we decided, hey, why stop there? So after work, we usually would Skype together and do one to two word war sessions where we would write as much as we could in 30 minutes and then we would share our word counts at the end. Um, actually during the first week when we were together we wrote for a lot longer like an hour or an hour and a half which was a very very long time but for me I had felt like oh I have to get into the zone I just got to bust the words out um, which did help but then I liked those 30 minute chunks um, afterwards because it gave me some time to you know, kind of take a break if I needed to, go to the bathroom, get some water, kind of check in with my sister. So that really helped me out. Another thing that I did when I would go to work is I would bring some of my notes with me that I had to help me with writing if I needed to look something up. So I actually had printed out a whole bunch of papers, some character information, um, and then also I have my map on here. You can kind of see a little sneak peek there. Um, but I had that, so I would bring that uh, to work and I would keep that at my desk when I would get home, just so if I needed a quick reference of things. And I also, um, I didn't really use this as much because I was really just trying to get the words in, but I did use the Emotion Thesaurus um, a little bit too, so I would keep this on hand. Now, 
because I sent the chapters to my sister, I, I kind of call her my alpha reader because she reads everything before any of the beta readers would read anything. Um, but I would skim over the chapter once I finished it before I sent it to her just to make sure there weren't any like glaring mistakes. Now people always said like, you know, don't look back at your work, don't edit it, but it actually helped me because as I was going through that chapter and kind of skimming it, I actually added to my word count like 150, 200 words every time. So it actually helped me. And when I did see something that I'm like, oh, I could, I could tighten up the prose here. Oh, oh, but that would, but then I'd say, oh no, that would like lower the word count. So I'm just going to leave it because I'm sure I will, I will remember it when I get to editing it. So I actually found that going back and kind of editing my work added to my word count instead of taking away from it. So a lot of people talk about going through the mid book slump where it's really hard to try to truck through the 50% mark, the midpoint of the story. For me, I found that it was really easy for me to get to that halfway point because you're just introducing the world, introducing some new characters and rules. So it was really exciting for me because I was like learning about it as I went. And then I knew I had that midpoint to get to. But what had kind of been hard for me with writing, which was the first time I ever felt like kind of like I was in a slight writer's block, um, was that 50 to where I left off, the 50 to 65 percent mark, because I knew that I was getting close to that climax, which is around the 75 percent mark, but I still had a long way to get there. So it was actually pretty hard for me to kind of truck through that. And I didn't have those scenes completely um, planned out. I realized with NaNoWriMo that I actually am not a plotter. I am a planter because I don't, you know, plan every single little nitty gritty thing um, for each scene, but kind of just like the overall uh, plot point and kind of what's going to happen. So that was a little bit rough for me. But I know that I am getting to the point that I really want to reach that climax. Um, so I think that for the you know rest of the month and hopefully finishing this novel by the end of the month, you know I can just truck through and get to those very very exciting high tension points. So on Thanksgiving morning, I ended up hitting my word count of 50,000 words and winning NaNoWriMo officially, which was awesome because it was like the best Thanksgiving present that I could get. And I was like, I could go about the day. I could do whatever I want. I don't have to worry about getting the words in. This is amazing. So I was really, really proud of myself. And I kind of slowed down a little bit in the last week. I really took it easy, but I still wrote every day because I wanted that write for 30 days in a row badge on the NaNoWriMo website. So I was able to check that off. But actually, the last day, the very last day, November 30th, was the roughest day for me that I have had in a long time um, because of all this crazy stuff that was going on at work. So I was so angry. I was driving home. I'm like, Chris, we need to order Domino's. I want pizza and lava cakes and I just want to like veg on the couch and watch Netflix. So I ended up writing like three words, one of them being a curse word <laughs> on my NaNoWriMo novel. And I was like, there, I wrote today. And so, hey, I did write. I wrote three words. Um, so I was just really glad that I had met my word count goal already because it was a very, very rough day for me. Um, but yeah, so I ended NaNoWriMo at 55,656 words, which I was so excited about. Like, I'm just so proud of myself because you know, I hoped that I could do it, but I didn't know if I could do it. And I realized, like, as I was writing that, like, heck, this is really, really hard. And I'm so proud of all the other people that I've been following on um, on Facebook. There's Nanoland uh, Facebook group, which was really fun to, um, you know, comment on people's word counts or they just posted funny memes. So it was kind of inspiring and motivating to kind of be going along the journey with them as well. And then just checking in with people on Twitter, checking in on my, with my sister. Um, so even if you didn't get very many words in, you still wrote something and that's awesome. So I'm very proud of you for wherever you got in your NaNoWriMo novel and there's still December so you can still write more because my plan is to finish writing The Celestial Code in December 
So hopefully I will hit that because my estimate was that it was, would be around 80,000 words, so I still have another 25,000 to write. So wish me luck. <laughs> So that's all I've got for you today. Leave a comment below and let me know how many words you got during NaNoWriMo. And if you didn't participate in NaNoWriMo, then let me know what your progress was in your work in progress. So that's all I've got for you today. Until next time, bye. Yay, okay.